I want to thank you for coming out tonight on this gray and rainy evening. As we heard from our religious leaders, from all of them, this is a time of sadness in our world, a time of violence and division. And we need to find a way back to one another. I have been the dean here for 14 years and I have wanted to be part of this interfaith Thanksgiving service for all 14 of those years. But every single year, One Jack scheduled this service at the same time as my board met, and I have to run my board meetings. So every year I miss this service. But this year, about a week ago, Patty McElroy gave me a call on the phone and said, the church that was going to host this service had to cancel. Can you host? And I said, I'd love to, but I have to be running my board meeting. And she said, well, we want you to preach. And I said, heck, I'll skip the board meeting. Because there was never a more important time for us to gather. And in times of stress and conflict, how can we come back together? I remember years ago, I gathered at St. Philip's Church, where Marcia is, to have what we then called civil discourse. We gathered people from various backgrounds, and we sat in a circle, kind of like this one. You all are the rest of the circle. We were going to talk about guns, There were people in that circle that disagreed with one another profoundly. But the facilitator did something so brilliant. He said, I don't want you to see one another as on different sides of this issue. I want you first to look at one another as human beings. So before we discuss the issue, I want you to say who you are and why you find this issue important. So we ran around the circle. And there was a woman whose son had died from gun violence at a gas station pumping gas. And there was a young cop who had to go into crack houses and was afraid he would die and he had little children and a wife at home. And we had a man who had been unjustly incarcerated for seven years and a judge who saw all this crime. And a woman, an elderly woman, who's afraid to go out at night. And hearing one another's stories, it changed everything. We were able to look at this complex issue as if it were a diamond and examine its many sides. Our discussion was profound because we saw one another as human beings. I want you to see one another as human beings. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and why I'm grateful that I'm here tonight. And I'm hoping that after this service, you will go out to our fellowship hall where there's wonderful food and you will find someone very different from yourself and you will ask them about their life. And then I want you to give thanks for something about them. Something that teaches you. The reason I'm so overjoyed to be here tonight 
is because I was born a Hindu. I know, isn't that weird? I'm a white woman from Connecticut. <laughs> but my parents were hippie seekers. My dad, I guess he could have been by default Jewish, but his mom didn't really practice Judaism. My mom, her mom was an atheist. They were searching. So when I was born, we would take these road trips down from New Haven, Connecticut to New York City, where we would go to an ashram. And my first memories are of the delicious curried chicken or the orange robe of the Swami, or the sound of a Hindu bhajan being sung. My parents like to tell me that at age two, they thought it was a really good sign because a very old Swami was sitting down and I tried to not only climb in his lap, I tried to climb on top of his head and he was laughing and laughing and laughing. And he said, this is a high soul. She's trying to reach my highest chakra. <laughs> but the Swami said to my mother, who was a musician and composer, you will not be able to write good music in Hinduism because your childhood was raised in a Christian context. You need to return and find a church. My mother began practicing the organ in an Episcopal church, kind of like this one, big, with high ceilings and stained glass windows. She would practice in the evenings and only turn on the lights in this area that we call the chancel. So I would take off my shoes and run and slide down the aisles in my socks. And I would play in the pews and I sense the presence of something, and we all have a different word. This peace that passes all understanding, this safety and depth, and I felt at home. So I was baptized when I was five, and I've come to love Jesus. But there is a part of me that always knows that there is beauty in the Hindu tradition because I tasted it. I have come to believe that there are two beautiful metaphors when it comes to the religions of the world. The first is that we are like ants at the base of Mount Everest. We who contemplate the divine we're like ants at the base of Mount Everest, but we're having an argument about how high the mountain is. And one of the ants says, it's as high as two anthills. And the other one says, no, it's as high as three anthills. And then they go to war over it. And the mountain is looking at them, knowing that they can't possibly understand. The other analogy is that the religions of the world are like blind men feeling an elephant. And one of them has the ear and says, it's floppy and flexible. And one of them has the trunk and says, it's long and lean. And one of them has the thigh and says, it's strong and solid and big. And they're all right. Every one of them is telling a truth. But the divine is so much greater than anything that our human brains could ever conceive of. The Rig Veda, which is the oldest scripture known to humankind, says this, truth is one, sages call it by many names. So I would like to say tonight, that I am thankful for the Buddhist because he practices meditation with such incredible clarity of mind that I am thankful for my Jewish brothers and sisters because they study the Torah with such scholarship that inspires me that I admire the Sikh 
for their strength and discipline. That I love the beauty of Hinduism, which has such breadth and depth that I will always admire the Muslim because he puts his prayer mat out five times a day, prayer, practices prayer, and interrupts his busy schedule five times a day. I am grateful for what I learned from all of you. And I am grateful to be with you tonight.